Welcome to another panel for discussion at the eHealth Summit 2021. Technology is without doubt transforming health. Naturally, the startups that focus on these two areas, health and technology, play a fundamental role as agents of change. Today, we are talking about the potential of the digital health market and the ideas that have uh, been born in Portugal and cross, cross borders. To speak about these subjects and others, we have here David Magbule, who's a representative of Startup Portugal, and Filipe Fisch, who's a member of the board for the uh, promotion of the Information Society. Welcome. Digital and e-health has huge potential, and the tech startups have uh, an absolutely crucial role on this digital path we're all on. I will begin with you, David. The knowledge um, created in Portugal, has it made the difference in this market in terms of um, digital health? First of all, thank you for inviting me to be here, and I would like to greet my uh, colleague here at the panel. Without doubt, knowledge has transformed itself into innovation. Sometimes that's what lacks in Portugal and um, South Europe as a whole. And here we're talking about not just academic knowledge, but also clinical know-how. And the main advantage of digital health is that all the stakeholders involved, which can be from the medical and the academic side, or people from other areas outside healthcare, which are looking at these uh, cases in order to identify the problems that happen in terms of processes, uh, healthcare, um, improving patients' life, improving patients' well-being. So this knowledge means that people will want to offer a solution to these problems or barriers that we have been uh, identifying. We have the technology that allows us to overcome these hurdles and now, increasingly, in all of these sites, academic, clinical, and outside um, health, we have people who try to bring solutions. Flipper, I will ask you the same question, knowledge, the knowledge that comes from Portugal. Has it been decisive in this area of health? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank. First of all, I'd like to thank Thank you uh, for inviting me to be here. It's a pleasure to be in this event, in this panel. What we bring from 2020 is innovation and the capacity to make things happen. We have been able to change in health what would perhaps take decades to transform with technology. Even before the pandemic, we lived in a virtual world. There was uh, mobility. Um, it was digital. How many people in a household? 2.6 people yet we have six connected devices per household, which means that we were already in a hyper-connected world. Then after the pandemic, of course, and during the pandemic, we're still living through it, we realized that we need to work more as a team and we need a more uh, intelligent, smarter world, which can only be done with technology and the capacity to make things happen and innovation. An example of entrepreneurship in Portugal and Europe, and even outside of Europe, is the vaccine. We were able, and let's let's see that the, the first one was Pfizer, Biotech, and Moderna. These were two startups in biotech. And they'd already invested in that technology for many years, the, the carrier. But because there was this um, change in governments, institutions, and academic um, centers, and the citizens, we all focused on the main purpose, which was to have a vaccine um, as quickly as possible. And we always say that health needs to focus on the citizen. There was this cultural shift. We also used technology to help us accelerate clinical trials, um, artificial intelligence, remote monitoring, remote care. And we put innovation, technological innovation, at the service of the citizen. And that is just one example. We had many more. We were forced, so to speak, but without innovation and technological innovation, we wouldn't have been able to have health the way that we wanted. 
the health of the um, of the 22nd century have someone in Mars and monitor them remotely. You focused a very interesting aspect that has been um, discussed in this seminar over these two days where we're discussing health and the potential of technology, which is Portugal stating the value that it has and the capacity to offer responses in the digital area. This was a year of challenges where we were able to affirm Portugal's values, was it? Yes, we all um, realized in, in, when in March last year, we realized that we needed to change our behavior. We couldn't go everywhere physically like we did in the past. And here, the technology that we already had, because the technology already existed, Sometimes we call them emerging technologies, but they already happened at a, a click away on our phone. So this technology, which typically takes one, two years, five, ten years, which has many uh, procedural hurdles, legislation, all of that was overcome in two weeks. And we had the capacity to do so with um, academic centers, startups, spin-offs, biotech firms, healthcare professionals, they were fundamental to change and to once again focus on the citizen and use the technology that we had. Now we can have telemedicine a click away. It already existed, but now it is more of a routine manner because that means we could have remote healthcare. I think we have some of the best human resources, very qualified. We're on par with Europe and the rest of Europe. And we took the next step. Now we need to understand how we can deal with this sustainably, have the infrastructure and have a good experience for the patient and for the healthcare professional. David, let us talk about the role of startups. All of us in this last year, particularly every single area, had a fundamental role, especially because we needed to offer responses to the citizens to save lives. Entrepreneurship, um, do you feel it has increased? Well, yes, of course, without doubt. In Portugal now we have about 3,000 startups. I can't tell you how many are um, linked with healthcare. We're working on an art of, on a, a platform in the market to have those concrete data. But we've seen that the number of startups in, related to health has grown, and they've become more mature. They are carrying Portugal's name uh, beyond borders with international renown, specifically speaking about the example of the pandemic. We're always talking about it, but that was um, a transformative element, not just for society, but because of all the startups and entrepreneurs who wanted to help out. We have a Tech for COVID a platform that was created with a group of um, uh, with a group of Slack. It's a, a working tool where a lot of the uh, players who aren't linked to healthcare wanted to bring their knowledge forward to offer solutions to the people who were directly or indirectly associated with COVID-19. I'm talking about ideas that range from, I'll give you concrete um, uh, examples. We have two platforms, two startups that have nothing to do with healthcare, and they created a chat bot so that people could um, describe the symptoms, and the chat bot would um, filter according to severity and then refer to either the healthcare hotline or a healthcare center or hospital. That is an example of the effort, the collective effort that was made by several startups and that's what's interesting about digital health. And as you said earlier on, this um, multidisciplinarity of knowledge, expertise, the capacity to bring solutions that are evident, that are immediate. And we have so many examples of startups nowadays that have multidisciplinary teams and bring this um, outside Portuguese borders, make money, grow, and scale up to be able to compete with some of the best in the world. Flipa Fish, we've all become differently aware of what technology is and what it represents in our lives, have we? Yes, we have. 
what existed uh, before, we could do, th we were able to do things very differently. There are trends that the citizen was aware of, for example, the e-prescriptions, um, remote uh, appointments with the doctors. That was a reality for every single doctor when they realized that they didn't have to go to a hospital physically. There is innovation that will take us to the future of healthcare. Health and digital nowadays no longer, uh, separately, no longer make sense. They are together. Um, medicine. Mr. Mushaku, a North a U.S. A physician, physicist, sorry, said that one of the aspects most um, associated with me with digital is medicine. We we will have is healthcare. We have more in our phones than a hospital has at the moment. But human beings will also play a fundamental role in decision making. They will always have this role. So in the future, there are major trends such as uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. We can we can see this with the diagnosis, uh, surgeries, programming, improving the efficiency in organizations. This is a way of being healthier. Uh, for longer, so we're using uh, phones the best way we can, 3D printing, the capacity to test at the point of care. Instead of having a complete lab, we have a lab on a cheap where I can run my own test. And instead of asking the mirror who's fairest of them all, I will ask, what is my health like at the moment? There are major trends here that uh, we, we imagine them in a faraway future, but they will be accelerated because of the pandemic that gave us this um, additional pressure to adopt them. So I, I clearly see that we will be absorbing new technology slowly. We need to qualify uh, people more and more so that they can understand the benefit and have this uh, lit digital literacy and health literacy so that they can have this, uh, this idea to change, understand why they're changing, why am I doing it this way and not the other way. That is fundamentally um, important as is trust. We need to have trust citizens, healthcare institutions, so that this will be used, digital will be used in health as it is for, say for banking. And that is fundamental for there to be more technological innovation in healthcare. This is a relationship that needs to be strengthened, right? Yes, every single day. David, you have more than 15 years of experience in healthcare, biotech, pharmaceuticals, medical devices. You're very linked to this digital area. And Flipper spoke about a subject that piques my interest. And normally when I speak about people in the field of technology, I like to hear your point of view. You spoke about technology being at the service of citizens, responses in healthcare being focused, first of all, for citizens, focused on citizens. So you who work in this field of startups and digital, when you have an idea, when you think about a company, what is the barrier between what technology can be as an ally and what it can be as um, having human relations more distant. Healthcare is a great way to, to speak about ways that bring us closer, not further away. Is it is healthcare a good example? Returning to the example of uh, the pandemic of how it was so transforming, people became used to accepting this transformation because between being at home with their family, when we wanted to ch chat to our family, it was a video conference, a Zoom, whatever. And people, people started thinking about, well, I don't need to go to a hospital now, now, don't I? So we had more and more remote uh, consultations with healthcare professionals. We have the three major private hospitals in Portugal that implemented services and reinforced their video consultation services. We have public hospitals who did that, state hospitals, and even some municipalities offer that service. And that is for the citizen. We have an example. Again, I like to give examples of startups, be, not to speak about them uh, specifically, but because they're examples of being uh, in the right place at the right time. Some of them have existed for a few years, but Nokia Healthcare, not Healthcare, 
was able to um, deal with some entities and now supplies a lot of the um, video consultations in our health system. And they are now expanding internationally because the need is not just in our country. It is international. So having a good system regardless of the country that develops it, including a small country like Portugal, then we're able to compete as long as we can integrate the solution. The issue is that technology for healthcare means that there are more and more services being offered and citizens being closer so patients can manage their own disease, so they can have more information, so that they can measure the impact of all the treatment, um, the therapies they may need, and also from a clinical perspective, so that um, doctors can measure this impact. But all the regulation around the implementation of these digital healthcare tools is still lagging behind the speed of technology. And that is one of the main challenges, not just nationally for Portugal, but also the European Union as a whole to be able to keep abreast of this evolution. Because on the one hand, you have technology, say Facebook, Amazon, Google. They are at cruise speed and regulators try to react and not be proactive. And the same happens with healthcare. And sometimes we miss out on good opportunities because the regulators aren't up to date and cannot react in due time. Flipper, from your perspective, what's missing so that there can be an effective impact of value of knowledge, technological development? What then do we need to take the leap digitally? We all want this leap. We all want more technological innovation. There's a study by PwC from the start of the year that asks people who used um, remote monitoring in healthcare if they would like to keep this uh, remote care, if they feel that this brings us closer or more distance, distant to the relationship with the healthcare providers. And the responses are clear. 90% want to keep a hybrid model. There are consultations that can be done remotely. Others need to be done physically. And they feel that this will bring them closer. I can say that we are a click away. And if there's a relationship, then we can work closer and have this, um, this, this, this idea of self-care we all need. That is just one study. There will be more. But it shows that more, of, more and more of us want technology in healthcare just as we have in other areas. For example, we wouldn't go to a bank nowadays when we have home banking services. For this to happen in health, it's not a technological shift, it's a cultural shift. And when I'm talking about a cultural shift, first of all, we need to think that we cannot leave anyone behind. If we look at the planet, there are 3.6 billion people who aren't connected, who are offline. So yes, we need technology, but we cannot forget those people. That is a considerable amount of people who are offline. We need to manage change. We need to have resilient infrastructure. We need to have healthcare professionals. Uh, the citizen needs to understand why they're using technology. What is the benefit? What's What's the gain? How will my health improve? How will I operate more in prevention? If we look at the city of Lisbon, people uh, take more care. They do, they do more exercise. They check how many steps um, they have. And this feedback of technology needs to be incorporated. But in therapy, this needs to, to have a change management system. The healthcare professionals need to understand um, the goal and how can I have this technology being used so that I will have more benefit for the citizen at the end of the day. So yes, it's a cultural shift and we need trust. We all need to generate this trust so that the information systems will be increasingly used. And that is your message, trust, yes. David, what would you highlight so we can conclude the two major advantages of technology in the field of health and why citizens should be confident in the potential of technology? 
One other thing that the um, digital startups for health uh, can offer is data. They can collect data, share this data, not just with the people who use their platform, like a patient, but also those who need to have those data for decision making, physicians, doctors. What happens often is this lack of integration of this information with the um, existing information systems in hospitals or um, health systems as a whole. So in that sense, I agree completely with Flipa. Yes, trust, but also trust in terms of data protection. Because if there is one area where data protection is seen uh, in a very thorough manner, it's health, no doubt. So in that sense, we need to accept we need to trust and accept that this is already here because there's no turning back and this happens uh, it's not being replaced by by technology sometimes people are scared of that because of all the advances in um, artificial intelligence so what we need we need is a more humane a more human judgment machines cannot do this at least so far but above all doctors will only be overcome if they don't use technologies. Not, it won't be technology overcoming them. It will be their colleagues who use it to the detriment of those who don't. So we need to accept the changes here. It's already happening. I have a feeling that many times when patients uh, go into um, uh, uh, practice, they know more than the, the doctor about what they want because they have information available. So above all, we need to um, keep abreast of all these changes because it's with these people and the structures that we will be able to transform our healthcare systems. Very well, thank you very much, uh, David Magbole representing Startup Portugal, Flipa Fisch for the Association of Promoting the Information Society, giving us information uh, on what uh, will happen in digital technology and health, feeling technology as an ally in the inevitable future. Thank you very much.